the scriptures are very clear that God alone is God, and God alone is all-powerful to accomplish his purpose. However, the Old and New Testament also demonstrate that God has chosen to use us in accomplishing his purposes, and uh, that there are some things that God says he will do when we respond in a certain way. We've been looking in the book of Romans at how God stabilizes believers, and in particular, beginning in chapter 12 up through chapter 15 here, about how God uses believers who are stable. Notice I'm indicating myself, so I trust that I'm stable, but I, and I trust you are too, but how he stabilizes us as believers and how we then can play a role in those who are not yet stable and are not yet strong becoming stable and strong. I'm Pastor Tim Holsher, and as these studies are getting closer to kind of coming to our, to our primary point, to, to coming to a conclusion, I should say, we look here in verse 13 today. He says, now may the God of hope. Why is he the God of hope? Because he's the God that has made the promises. See, the hope that we're talking about is not hope that I dream up, hope that I will end up being taller, hope that uh, I might be able to go take this vacation or hope that I might be able to acquire this thing. Or We have all these hopes, but none of these hopes in reality, and this is, I think, very important for us to understand, none of those hopes are based on promises from God particularly. And when he says the God of all hope or the God of hope, he's talking about the fact that God's made these promises to us. And that God of hope will fill you with joy and peace and all, the, all of our translations, I couldn't find a translation, I think, that represents, in my opinion, what Paul says here. Because he doesn't say, as you believe in him. Literally, in the Greek, it's an infinitive verb. It has these, these words at the beginning that are kind of pointing to, to the point or the, the means by which he's going to do this. That he fill you with joy and peace, I would say, to or with the objective that you believe. Believe what? believe in the promises that he's made. So you are, I, even though they've added that in him, and it is it is going back to believing in God. You're believing in him because he's the one that's made the promises. And what are those promises? We've been looking at those, but we need to go back and review these today so that you can understand better what you're believing, what the hope is that you're believing, what these promises are. Romans chapter 5, he's talking about this, this access that we have by uh, by faith and by grace, and he goes, and we then boast, we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Glory being God's reputation. And he's expressing that reputation by what he's accomplishing through us and bringing us to the point, as we're going to see in just a minute, that we're actually going to get to share in the kind of glory that the Son has in his human nature, that Jesus Christ has. And that's this hope. And we boast in that. We boast in the fact that as we're going through, as he's going to say here, sufferings, as we face sufferings, doing that, all of that is working us, moving us closer and closer to this point in which we're going to be an expression of God's glory, expression of his reputation. Now, what is that reputation? Well, some of it goes back over here. This is Romans 8, 17. It says we're heirs of God and fellow or joint heirs with Christ. And then if indeed we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. We're going to be glorified. And we've already talked about this if indeed. This is not quite in question. In the Greek, this is stating very plainly, it's sure we do suffer with him. Now, some believers are going to say, well, I don't know that I've suffered. Yeah, you may not have suffered like believers in other parts of the world. But if you have demonstrated Christ-like character, and there are people that have caused you problems simply because you've demonstrated Christ-like character, simply because you respond properly to situations. And I know what that's happened. I've been in, in, in situations where I've had people that have been rude and critical to me, of me, simply for demonstrating Christ-like character, not being intentionally condemning, not going around saying you shouldn't do or shouldn't say, just the way you live. And he says, that's a kind of, there is a suffering. And that comes upon us as believers when we're living out this work that the Holy Spirit is accomplishing in us. And he assures us we're going to be glorified with him. That glory, he says down here in Romans 8 also, uh, in verse 23, 
He says, and not only this, but also we ourselves having the first fruits of the Spirit. See, he's producing this in us. Even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting eagerly for our adoption or our placement as sons, the redemption of our body. For in hope we've been saved. That is, we were saved in the hope that God has something planned for us. That we really are going to be what God wants us to be. That he really is going to forgive us. That he really has, and he has... And that that forgiveness is going to usher into other aspects. In other words, there's a lot of hope that we have. And it's in hope that we've been saved. saved. And another aspect of these promises. So this is a promise. A promise that we really will be placed as sons. And that our bodies will will truly be redeemed. And then over in Romans 8 at the end of the chapter, in verse 35, who will separate us from the love of Christ? In other words, as God's moving us along that trajectory, as he's moving us closer and closer to that glory of what he plans for us to be, that opinion that he has, that reputation he's expressing, he says, what's going to separate us from Christ's love? Because Christ is interceding for us. He has acted for us to reach that goal, to go further. And not only that, but then he makes a statement at the end that so many are very familiar with in verse 38, for I'm convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. There's nothing you can do to get God to stop loving you, continuing to count you to be in Christ. And as part of that, that whole purpose of moving us forward. We sometimes forget that God, that we have moved forward very slowly, but God faithfully has moved us forward. He's doing that with others. And if we go back to Romans chapter 15, if you believe that promise, if you believe in that hope that comes from God because God's made you this promise, that he's going to get us there, that we're going to reach that point of glory, that we will be glorified, if we're doing that, then we, he says, we may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Overflow with hope, how? Overflow, I would say, with hope that, yes, that we're going to reach there, but also overflow in hope in this context that God's going to get those other believers there. Those other believers that maybe at the moment uh, are difficult to deal with because they're still stuck in issues and problems that you, God, maybe has sort of settled with you in the past. Although I would have to say, you know, about the time that we get a big head and we think that that's all settled, we end up tripping. We end, tripping is code for we end up sinning. We end up doing something unrighteous and we get frustrated with ourselves. And then we start wondering, oh, I don't know if I'm ever going to make it. And then we have to go back and remind ourselves the truth. Wait a second, I am going to make it because ultimately it's God's work. That should encourage us. It's God's work. He's the one that's going to finish this work in us. We have this hope that he is going to finish what he's begun, that he is moving us along this path. And his goal is that we will share in the kind of glory that Jesus Christ has, the glory that he has in his human nature, not his divine glory, the glory that he has in the realm of his human nature, Jesus Christ. And we get to share in that. That's something to look forward to. When was the last time you reminded yourself, you know, I go through a lot of things. I've gone through struggles. I've gone through ups and downs. I've performed well, but I've also failed. But you know what? God is going to finish in me what he started, and I will get to share in the glory of my Savior, Jesus Christ, because of him, not ultimately because of me. Boy, that's something that ought to encourage us as we think of ourselves and look at others that are still coming along and are struggling. Encourage us to have a good day in the Lord. Thank you for joining me today.